In this video, I will talk about osteopetrosis and pycnodysostosis in children. Osteopetrosis is a type of bony dysplasia resulting from defective bone resorption. Osteopetrosis is of two types. One is severe form and the other is mild form. The severe form is inherited as autosomal recessive disorder and it presents in infancy. The mild form is also known as marble bone disease, elbers schonbeck disease or osteopetrosis tarda. It is an autosomal dominant disorder and it presents in later childhood or adolescent. Now I will discuss the pathophysiology of osteopetrosis. It is due to defect in osteoclast activity, thus leads to failure to remodel growing bones. In the severe form, osteoclast specific subunit of the vacuolar proton pump gene defect is present, while in the mild form, there is mutation of the chloride channel gene. Now, both types of this mutation lead to disturbance of acidification which is needed for normal osteoclast function. Now, there is a rare form of osteopetrosis which is due to lack of bioactive wrinkle that is receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B legend. This is the master osteoclastogenic cytokine which is produced mainly by the osteoblast. Clinical features of osteopetrosis The severe form present in early infancy with macrocephaly, severe anemia due to encroachment on the marrowspace, hepatosplenomegaly due to compensatory extramedullary hematopoiesis. There is also deafness, blindness. Facial nerve palsy and other cranial neuropathies are due to narrowing of the cranial nerve foramina. In severe form, there is also fever and infections due to leukopenia and bleeding episodes such as petechi purpura due to thrombocytopenia. Hypocalcemic seizures are also very common. There is failure to thrive and psychomotor delay. Now, dental abnormalities, osteomyelitis of the mandible, and pathological fractures are also common in severe form. Now, those who survive beyond infancy, learning disorders are usually present. Mild form of osteopetrosis usually present in later childhood and it manifests as mild anemia, fractures, cranial nerve dysfunction, dental abnormalities, and osteomyelitis of the mandible. Now the diagnosis of osteopetrosis. Skeletal radiographs should be done. This shows diffuse bone sclerosis that is generalized increase in the bone density. Characteristic bone within bone appearance is very important diagnostic feature in osteopetrosis. There is clubbing of the metaphysis and alternating bands of lucent and dense band they produce a sandwich appearance of the vertebral bodies. Other lab findings in osteopetrosis include low hemoglobin, leukopenia or leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia, low serum calcium and phosphorus levels, serum parathyroid hormone level and alkaline phosphatase level are increased. Serum vitamin D levels is normal. Now I will discuss the treatment of osteopetrosis. Most of the bony manifestation in severe osteoporosis which is caused by intrinsic osteoclast defects can be prevented or reversed by hematopoietic stem cell transplantation if it is carried out before the development of irreversible secondary complications such as visual impairment. Wrinkle replacement therapy that is receptor activator nuclear factor kappa B legion cytokine is useful in patients with wrinkle deficiency. Calcitriol and interferon gamma are also useful in osteopetrosis. Dental care is important. Back cell transfusion should be given for anemia, platelet transfusion for thrombocytopenia and antibiotics should be given for infections. In the case of hypocalcemic seizures, IV calcium gluconate should be given. Now the prognosis of osteopetrosis. Untreated, the most severely affected patients usually die during the infancy and the less severely affected patient rarely survive beyond the second decade. Differential diagnosis of osteopetrosis include pycnodysostosis, torch infection, Gaucher disease, and thalassemia. Now I will discuss pycnodysostosis. It is an important differential of osteopetrosis in children. Pycnodysostosis is a bony dysplasia resulting from defective bone resorption leading to increased bone density. It is due to mutation of osteoclast cystine protease. 
Because of this enzyme defect, there is inability of the osteoclast to degrade bone matrix and remodel bones. It is an autosomal recessive disorder and it usually manifests in early childhood. Pycnodysostosis usually manifests in early childhood. There is short limbs, characteristic faces, open anterior frontal, large skull with frontal and occipital bossing, dental abnormalities, short and broad hands and feet, dysplastic nails, sclera may be blue and fractures are common for minimal trauma. For diagnosing pycnodysostosis, skeletal radiographs are taken. They show generalized increase in the bone density. Metaphyses are normal. Skull shows white sutures and vermian bones. There is small mandible and hypoplasia of the distal phalanges in the hand x-ray is present. In pycnodysostosis, symptomatic treatment is given. Dental care and management of fracture is important. Prognosis of pycnodysostosis is generally good. Patient typically reach heights of 130 to 150 cm. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel.